Hello and welcome back to yet another Let's Play channel. I'm Vic, and yeah, you may have noticed that this is not Tale of Two Wastelands. Uh, don't worry, that series will certainly continue. Uh, I figure I'm m maybe halfway through it. I intend to cover all the, what, six DLCs that span the two games. But, um, well, for one thing, uh, I know that doing one thing for a long time uh, can be sort of boring for some folks. And for another, well, I've been pretty hung up on this other thing, so I figured I might as well share it. I haven't seen anybody else doing it yet. So this is not going to be a full playthrough. Uh, we're doing something more along the lines of what we did with Pacific Drive. Uh, this is Outpost Infinity Siege. And um, we'll go and do a little tour around the base. And then we'll do an expedition. Uh, and I've picked out a particular expedition that uh, won't be any problem for me and my build. Uh, but I think is sort of illustrative for somebody that hasn't played the game yet of the good and some of the bad. Uh, so here we are in the Nexus. Um, got some of my random NCPC buddies hanging out, doing nothing. There's my loot record. Uh, you can see... <laughs> you can see on Expedition 8 there, I really got my ass handed to me. And uh, we're going to come back to that. Um, this right here is my weirdly sexy AI... And um, in the unlikely event that there are any modders watching, uh, why is she not naked? Like, she's already got boob physics. She's already got fun poses. She's already got plenty of exposed skin. I feel like this should have been an easy mod, but I haven't seen it happen yet. So if we want to do mission, well, actually, she does lots of things for me. Um, but we will come back to her later. Um, through that door is the room where you build your quote-unquote outpost, uh, which is essentially a mobile fortress that you take with you on expeditions. Um, and it is where the turret defense portion of the game takes place. Um, one of the complaints that people have about this game is that it seems to be trying to be lots of different games. Um, and I, I guess I've experienced a little bit of that, but I really don't feel like I've come to a point where it's trying to be too many things. Um, so in here I got a, a dude and a lady weirdly in their combat uniforms and also working out. Um... I don't know what the laundry facilities around here are like, but they must be impressive. Uh, and I can talk to this woman here if I want to hire more operatives like these guys. Um, now I've got I've got a main dude. His name is Faye, and he's who I am right now. Um, who's like the story dude. Um, but you can also, if you don't want to take Faye out on a, on an expedition, you can take an operative that you have instead. I don't generally do that because I don't care. Maybe I should do that more. Uh, here we have an intelligence hub. This guy is annoying and I don't like to talk to him or to listen to him and you're going to hear me complain more about that. Um, but this woman here, um, you can talk to her to send your operatives out on little side quests. Um, and I don't have the right requirements for this one. Yeah, so nobody's out on that one. Um, but you know, they have various little skill trees and stuff. Oh, and, and that's my boss. He's mostly all right. Um, yeah, so the, the operatives have their own little stats and perks and stuff. Um, and you send them out on missions, and depending on their stats and perks, they can do well or not so well. They can get killed. Um, I don't think anything important gameplay-wise wise happens there, so screw it. And then, uh, over here is where you buy stuff and sell stuff. 
And apparently that's such a big deal that we needed different rooms to do those different things. So over here, we have three different people right now. Sometimes there's a fourth um, that I can talk to to buy stuff. Um, and some things I think I can sell directly to them. Uh, and then this dude over here manages the warehouse. And I think the warehouse is my favorite like background in the base. I love this enormous space and all of the logistical shit that's going on back there. Uh, and if I talk to him, I can see all the stuff that I've got in my inventory. So when I'm tired of wandering around the base, I can go on an expedition. Oh, actually there's, yeah, there's one more that we ought to check out before we go. Perhaps the most important room, in my opinion, which is, yeah, the research center. And it's over here. Why did I not go over here? I don't know. So this guy lets me research stuff. We'll talk more about that later, but there's tons of stuff to research. Um, and this woman, once I've researched stuff, she builds it for me so that I can put it on my outpost. Um, and she also lets me fiddle around with this Zen stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll get into what all of that's about on an expedition. So when you start off, of course, you've got this baby little outpost um, and it doesn't have a whole lot going on and you don't have very many build options. And you, uh, you work your way through the first few missions and you start to feel pretty good about it. Look at that monstrosity. Um, Please confirm your operatives. and you start to get confident and then the area. they send you to the snow ruins for the first time. Please confirm and you, operation. Yeah, and they send you here. Commander of Outpost 11, Faye Pratt. Sortie authorization granted. What kind of a last name is Pratt, anyway? Um, this is the mission where I think things get interesting for the first time. So this is what our expedition is going to cover. We've got these um, eight, seven, seven, in this case, locations that we can visit. We visit one each day. Uh, you can see today is currently day one. I don't think you can see my cursor. Yeah, you can't. So me pointing at things isn't doing me any good. Um, you're not allowed to visit any of the nodes on this graph more than once. So you have to be a little thoughtful about your route. Um, and then once you've visited at least one node, um, you can be done and go home. Uh, and then you have what's called a recovery day. Where instead of going out and exploring and grabbing up goodies, you get attacked. Anytime now. I never really noticed how long these loading screens took until I was sitting here being quiet through it. Talk about dead air. So normally I do a little bit more preparation, um, but this is going to be a fairly straightforward outing for me. All right, here we go. So we load in and I see, um, I see this location a lot. Um, there's sort of a, a landscape available and you can see there's a blue line there. That's sort of the outer ring of the area of operation. Um, and inside the area of operation, there will be a number of these points of interest. Um, and those can be different every time. So we've got sort of a roguelite thing going on here. Um, and I'm going to go and deal with this before my guns waste too much ammo. 
and I'm also going to switch to my cheap ammo. Alright. Let's go get that guy upstairs first. Ooh. And I forgot to put the correct the correct zen on my gun. Alright, so let's Let's take a step back, now that we're not pissing ammo at the walls. So that's my outpost. Um, and as you can see, it is bristling with guns. I'm actually in the process of phasing these guns out. You, you start with machine gun turrets, and at one point I had 14 of those on this thing. Um, and suffice to say, my outpost was very hungry for ammo. Um, so here I've got an auto loader and it feeds ammo to guns that it can see. Um, and as you can see, I've defended it with some pretty heavy walls, um, in order to make sure that it survives the battle so that it can keep me in the fight. So that'll hold up to six reloads, which it'll distribute among the guns when it decides it's time. Um... This is the core of the outpost. Uh, when you gather up goodies that you want to hang on to, you drop them in the container. Um, and then you can, once per day, send that container away. Um, and basically, the stuff that you have with you at the end of the expedition is the stuff that's either in your pockets or that you put in this box. And there are a couple of exceptions to that. Um, this is where I make my ammo. I currently have a manufacturing capacity of four ammo boxes per minute. Um, which is going to be plenty for this expedition. Um, and then I have some other modules that are not super important right now. So this right here... This is a close-in weapon system. Um, which is an upgrade to those machine guns uh, that not only can fight the various small mobs, but it also serves as a missile defense platform. So I have I have seven of these guys right now. Three of them are on a missile... No, I have nine now. I just added two before I started recording. Um, three are on a strictly missile defense roll, and the other six are on a general purpose defense roll. They'll just shoot anything they can see. Um... And they are, they are great. They're really powerful, but they piss ammo downrange. So I've got I've got two more auto loaders supporting all the guns up here. Um, then we've got a mortar system. And I, now that I think about it, I need to turn those mortars off. Because I don't want them wasting ammo before the final engagement. Um, so now we see one of the sort of mixed media aspects of the game. So in this mode, I'm commanding my outpost. Um, and mostly right now, that just means manipulating my turrets, but it can mean other things later. Um, most importantly, I'm going to be using it to occasionally do area scans and find goodies, or to convert uh, resources into power the game calls it power. It's more like fuel. It doesn't get generated by power generators, so it's not really power. Um, I can also control my ammo machines from here um, and my guns. Combat mode activated. So then the last weapon... No, nope, second to last weapon system we have is this artillery system, and I have two of them. Um, we're not going to need them for this run, uh, but I will talk more about artillery later. Uh, this guy, I guess, is a weapon system of sort also, so maybe the artillery were the third to last. Uh, this is a knight, and it is a mech, and it can operate. I can order it around on the battlefield, or I can hop in and drive it, uh, but I can only use it once per expedition, so we're going to save it to the end, if I even bother to get it out. Um, and then... This guy, this is the last weapon system. So this is a semi-automatic 30 millimeter cannon. Um, 
So it shoots larger bullets than the close-in weapon system, much more slowly, uh, but they are much larger. Uh, different guns for different adversaries, obviously. Let's see. So I mentioned that there was an exception to the stuff in the container rule. Uh, basically, that's this guy. So um, I can put stuff in his inventory and ship it straight home uh, at a cost of 30 power slash fuel uh, every time. Um, so it's kind of expensive, but it actually um, can take some of the strain off down the road. All right, so I mentioned that this is a relatively early game uh, expedition that we're doing. So one question would be, how much of this is available the first time you're here? And the answer is basically none of it. Um, you got machine guns and you've got a much worse version of the 30 millimeter cannons. And that's it. And that's going to prove to be part of the problem down the road. So we're here, we're in an area, um, basically the game now is uh, hoarding resources. So I'm pulling the tires off this car and it's adding fiber to my inventory, but it's also adding materials to my core tower, which is the really important thing because I need to get some ammo fabricated so that I can keep my guns running. Ah, and speaking of lack of preparation, um, this door is locked and ordinarily you would use a lockpick to open it. Well, ordinarily you'd have the option to, um, but I have a pretty powerful melee attack. So I frequently just bash doors uh, that are relatively bashable. Um, which means that I have to get in more fights later, but getting in fights is generally not a big problem. But, you know, there's a, a risk-reward calculation to be done there. So this house shows up a lot. We'll see it again and again. Um, and that, I think, is probably my biggest complaint about the game so far, is the number of points of interest is not that large. And um, so it can it can sometimes feel repetitive. Um, certainly, no location feels the same every time you visit it because you get different points of interest. But um, you know there there can be a lot of sameness. I'm not going to talk too much about all of the individual bits and bobs that I grab up. Most of it is just junk that I feed to the war machine. And so it doesn't really bear individual comment. But we'll do a little bit of this. And we'll do that tower, which is kind of special. And then we'll hit the road and go to the next one. One thing that I do want to comment on is this guy. So these guys, and you see they show up pretty regularly. That one had a lock pick, so that's nice. They carry many useful things. That one had an armor plate. Um, so if you look in the lower left corner there, there's a blue bar with some dividing lines on it. Uh, that's my armor, and it gets consumed as I get hit and I can replenish it with those armor plates. Um, so those are pretty nice to have around. Okay, so one of the things that's really important to manage is your materials and your power in your core. Um, it costs power to move from one location to the next and also to do some really important things on recovery day. So keeping your power full is really good. Um, and you pull from your materials to do things like deploy defenses. So that's also pretty important. Um, so stuff like this tower is 
really good to look out for and, and manage properly. Um, I'm going to get some free power out of it. And of course, also, there's goodies. Oh, Zen. I mentioned the Zens, and then I just kind of glossed them over. So, if you look at the lower right-hand corner, you can see these little colored squares here. Um, I've got three different Zen morphs equipped to this gun, and each of them have some Zen power-ups. Um, so you can... Th these are basically weapon mods. Um, you can change what your gun does to a surprising degree. Um, and also, you know, buff it up to suit your playstyle. Uh, but let's get that power done. So basically, this thing is a power generator, and the farther this ball travels before it lands in the hopper, the more power you get out of it. You can see I'm really good at throwing the ball. There we go, that was a pretty good one. So, me, um, I am a big fan of the Alpha Strike, as I like to call it. Um, so, I've got my gun built for maximum damage per shot. Um, and that's why I've got this blue Zen equipped right now. It's basically like a sniper style round. Um, this one is, uh, I forget what it's called, but it's basically like a cluster of homing bullets um, that, that explode. Um, but it's got like a 20 second cooldown. So it's pretty good for occasional crowd control. Um, and this one is really handy on recovery day. Um, and I'll show it to you then. I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it there. So ordinarily at this point, I would take the next 20 or 25 minutes and go cut down all those trees to top off my materials. Um, but I'm feeling rather cavalier today, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to drop some stuff in the box and get the hell out of here. I wish there was more video of the of the outpost walking around. Okay, so here's another roguelike aspect. Um, at the end of every exploration day, you get to pick a buff to take with you for the rest of the mission. Um, in this case, neither of these has a downside. Um, I'm going to take the amp kill. Yeah, because this is just going to continuously build my attack over the course of the run. This one... Uh, yeah, I get a big attack buff at the beginning of each day, and then it goes away. I don't like things that go away. Uh, so off we go to the next spot. I don't know if I want to get too into the story, um, but I think the deal here is this thing we're looking at in the sky is some kind of enemy orbital weapons platform. Um, and the deal is that basically the, the core of the outpost is generating some kind of jamming field that prevents whoever the hell is up there from figuring out exactly where I am and instantly annihilating me. Um, and so that's, that's what the blue circle around the area of operation is. Um, there's also that much smaller circle that just, in that just encloses the base called the X-Boost Field. Um, and as near as I can tell, the X-Boost field doesn't do anything unless you pick a perk that gives you a bonus. And now we see why I like having a gun that's a freaking cannon. Because I just wiped out all the guns up there. Well, all the guns I could see. Um, it would make life inconvenient for me in a few minutes when I get up there. Um, let's see. Yeah, alright. Occasionally, there is a location where there's a little hidden bunker 
that shows up uh, not far behind the outpost, and I can never remember which one it is, so I was just checking that out real quick. If you look at the upper left-hand corner, there's a mini-map there, and you can see there are a couple of, like, Google Maps-style beacons up there. Those mark most, but not all, of the interesting places you can find in a location. So, um, they generally serve as a pretty good guide for places to go to get stuff. But I have a feeling we're going to see a counterexample right now. Um, which is to say that, you know, if you look in the upper right hand corner, I'm supposed to find and collect composite fiber container one. And I don't think it's going to be at either of our points of interest. Now, this. This is. Be afraid of this. Um, on multiple occasions, I have glitched through this door and got trapped inside. Um, and had to restart the day to get out of it. Um, and I think that is annoying as hell. We should talk about this, too. So the, the weapon, the primary weapon of the operatives in the game is this so-called core gun. Um, and I don't know if it's called that because it has something to do with the core tower, um, but you get, you have this basic piece, which is sort of like a, like a pistol type configuration. Uh, and then you slap goodies on it. So I've got, I've got a heavy barrel. I've got a bayonet. I've got a little reflex sight that gives me a shield and I've got a stock. Um, so there's, there's a whole bunch of flexibility in terms of configuration. Oh, look, I was wrong. The composite fiber thingy right there. Loads of flexibility. Um, and there's also the additional flexibility of the uh, armor pieces that you saw below the core gun. Um, so like right now I've got boots that make me really fast and also give me a double jump, which are my favorite. Um, and I've got gloves let me do a little miniature scan. So they're not as comprehensive as the area scan that the base can do, but they also don't cost me base power to do them. And that should be an area secure. So these are what drive your research. You have to spend them in order to start a research project. So they're super important. I always give them really high priority. Um, on the other hand, I've probably got to a point where I don't really need to be stockpiling them anymore. So I might need to revisit that turret attacks have a small chance to ca uh, a chance to cause a small explosion. Hell yeah. I love it. And what do we got here? Octave HP. Don't care. Um So we got some more power for the outpost up here. Alright, so risk incident. This is one of the ones that comes with a penalty. When recovery day ends, gains more gold, 100% of billion mater building materials worth. And this is one of the things that is annoying me at this point, is I can't see what the rest of the penalty is. Enemies gain 15% what? But I'm going to take it, um, because this is going to be a fairly easy run for me. So it shouldn't be a big deal if I just go hog wild with the penalties. We'll see if that comes back to bite me. All right, and this opens this. You can tell I've done this before. This guy here will supply me some power. All right, and then we'll get more power over here and we'll be all topped off. Okay. 
That's it for the points of interest. And it's also it for our time today. So come back and see me again tomorrow. Um, and it'll be either more of this or more Tale of Two Wastelands. In any case, when this story continues, uh, I will have spent some time cutting down trees and getting some materials. Uh, and we'll be ready to move on to day three of our expedition. Talk to you soon.